Zebras and giraffes, art with Miss A. These you're going to make with your hands. And we're going to trace the contour line of your hands in two different shapes to make zebras and giraffes. All right, you're gonna need a piece of paper and pencil. The first one we're gonna do is the zebra. All right, get your piece of paper and I want it to be up and down portrait style. We've talked about that before. And you're going to get your pencil and your hand. If you are left-handed, you're gonna use your right hand. If you're right hand, you're gonna use your left hand. So put your hand, your pencil in your hand and whichever one you're not using to write with, that's the one you're gonna put on the paper. Notice how Miss A has put her hand in a diagonal, meaning your, the tips of your fingers are pointed to the corner of the paper. Then you're gonna take your pencil and trace really close to your hand so that when you pick up your hand, you will have an outline or a contour line of your hand. So I'm using a black Sharpie so you can see, but you are going to use a pencil. Take your time, go very slowly. Now, if your teacher decides that she wants to use just a copy of the outline or the contour line, you will have one in front of you. Otherwise, you will be doing this step with Miss A. Remember to go very slowly and take your time. That way you can go right close to your hand. If you go really fast, you're not going to have as much control with your pencil. It doesn't have to be perfect. You just want to have that outline of your hand and your thumb sticking up like an ear. Should look similar to this it doesn't have to be exactly like miss a's and if you have a copy that the teacher gave you you should have this in front of you we're going to start drawing our zebras so now you should have something that looks similar to this in front of you it doesn't have to be exact but first we're going to draw the ear right next to that other thumb ear just draw a line going up meeting up about the same height and going back down towards the face. After you have two ears, you're going to draw the muzzle of your zebra by making a curve line at the top of where your fingers were. So just go on the top and make a curved line going down a little bit curved and to the bottom. Perfect. Now let's make the eye of our zebra. You can make whatever style eye you want. I'm going to make an oval and I'm going to darken it in. You're going to be doing this in pencil and you can color it later. draw the mane of the horse on the back side of uh, where my thumb and my wrist is by making up and down lines. These are straight lines, but they're zigzag lines. Remember how Miss A taught you about different types of lines? And you can go all the way down that side of your zebra and you can make it as long as you want or short as you want. 
and you're just making straight zigzag lines going all the way down that one side of your zebra. to make some stripes on our zebra so we're going to do that same type of line going up and down but now we're going down and up so one line down and then you're going to go back up basically making the letter v and you can put stripes on your zebra as thick as you want or if you want them thinner and I'm coloring mine in black so you can see, but you can draw them and then color them with a color crayon. And add a couple more on the face, up and down, basically making zigzag lines that stop and coloring it in. Also, don't forget a nostril. I'm gonna make an oval nostril and some eyelashes on my eye. And then I'm gonna continue making my zebra stripes. Up, down, color in, up, down, color in. And then I'm gonna make some lines inside the ears and then continue some stripes on the sides of the neck of the zebra. Up, down, color in. side to side, up and down, making zigzag lines, and you can make your zebra stripes however you want. gonna make a smiley face on my zebra he's happy coloring in the ears you can switch to a black color crayon if you want and you can add more stripes where you think you need them and coloring them in it's primarily black and white so I decided to get a yellow crayon and color the muzzle of the zebra in yellow. I just think a little pop of yellow makes me happy. Plus, when I was looking at the muzzle of the zebra, the end looked like a smiley face to me, like a big yellow smiley face. Ta-da! I'm pretty happy with my zebra. I even named him. His name is Henry. What did you name your zebra? All right, now it's time to do the giraffe. Same idea of tracing your hand. Hi there. But you're going to do a fist and you're going to use the same uh, paper style portrait up and down. You're going to use your pencil and slowly trace around your hand and your wrist all the way to the end of the paper so that you have your contour drawing of your hand and your wrist. Ta-da! This is what it should look like, similar. Let's get started drawing the details of our giraffe. The first thing we're gonna draw are the horns or the ossicones, which are hard bone covered with skin that are on the top of a giraffe's head. And you're gonna do that by drawing one straight line up and then curving around and then going back down. And you should have one on one side and one on the other. There you go. So usually there's a tip on the top of the Aussie combs of giraffes. So we're gonna make a curved line going on top of the Aussie combs. One and two. Good job. 
Awesome. Remember, Miss A said, if you can draw shapes or straight and curved lines, you can draw anything. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to draw the giraffe's muzzle. We're going to make a large oval in the middle of our giraffe's face. It's where we're going to put the nostrils and a little smiley face. So a simple oval, perfect. And now let's make some eyes. Two eyes, maybe you wanna make ovals or circles, or you have a unique style all to your own. All right, let's make some nostril holes so our Giraffe can breathe and you can make ovals. Good job, kind of looks like a pig right now, doesn't it? And let's give our little giraffe a little smile by making a curve line under the nostrils. All right, it still does not look like a giraffe. We need to make some ears. So make a curved line. I call that my rainbow line, stop. And then you're gonna make a smile line going back into the head of the giraffe. So curve line going out from the Aussie comb. And when you get to the end, go the other way. Make a curve line going back up, like a smile, back to the giraffe. Ta-da! starting to look like a giraffe now we need to add some more details to our giraffe how about some spots giraffes have spots did you know that some small spots on the head of the giraffe, larger ones on the neck. Just take your time and draw some shapes that look kind of like squares or rectangles, but kind of abstract, meaning they're not exactly a square and they're not exactly like a circle. They're kind of in between. Put some maybe on the side of the face. Take your time with your pencil. Work very neatly drawing out those lines. And then maybe you want to put another line inside the ear to make it look like it has depth. So you just follow the contour line of the ear and make basically a smaller ear shape inside that ear. Do it for the other ear. Remember, to make it symmetrical, whatever you do on one side, do the same on the other. Ta-da! Now it's time to add the color. The best part! So get your color crayons out, and we are going to color our giraffe.
am going to use yellow for the background of the uh, giraffe and brown for the spots. So I'm going to take my time and color the giraffe yellow. And then after, I'm going to add black and I'm going to add brown. So take your time, color really nice and neat your giraffe. Maybe you want to make your giraffe a special color combination that you like. I'm making my giraffe realistic. So it's going to be the colors that you see a giraffe in nature. If you want to do it stylized, that means you pick a color that a giraffe really isn't in real life. That's called stylized. Did you know giraffes are endangered species? Meaning that there are very few of them and we really need to protect them. Now I'm using my brown to color some of the other things like the spots and the little spots on the head and the Aussie horns. And I'm taking my time doing my very best work. You don't need to rush. Sometimes working slower and more precise means that your artwork will be neater and will have a better turnout. So sometimes doing things fast is not better. Doing things slower is better. Now I'm using black to darken the tips of the giraffe's uh, Aussie horns and the ears of the uh, giraffe to make it look like it's not flat, that it's kind of got some depth, meaning three-dimensional. And I'm taking my time. You can use a black crayon if you have it. And oops, I forgot one spot. I'm going to do my brown again. I always like to stop and look at what I'm doing, make any corrections. And... I think I really like it. And I even named my giraffe. Her name is Alicia. Wasn't that fun making two different animals with just your hands? Awesome. So remember, if you can dream it, you can make it and you can change your world. Bye for now.